Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where today we are going to be doing a full-length non-spoilery review of The Crown of Shards Trilogy by Jennifer E. Stubb. So The Crown of Shards Trilogy starts with Kill the Queen, the second book is Protect the Prince, and the third book is Crush the King. Um, now this is an adult epic fantasy trilogy and in it we are following our main character of Evie who I believe is 17th in line for the throne at the beginning of this trilogy um, but so she's like royal but she has zero power um, and then one day the crown princess decides to kill everybody who is royal so that she can take the throne unchallenged unbeknownst to basically everybody evie survives this massacre makes her escape from the pa from the castle and like joins up with a local gladiator troop where she learns to fight and the story goes from there so we're going to jump right in with the world building and you're going to hear this a lot but what i found with the world building is that it is very familiar but has enough of a twist to keep it interesting so for the world building, this is very much European medieval. However, there's this slight modern twist to it, which I found fascinating. And I wish actually more, more fantasy stories would do because the thing is they've clearly had magic for a while and they have also very clearly used that magic to try to make their lives a little bit more convenient. So it's nothing majorly modern. They don't have like guns or gun equivalents or anything like that. But it's like, for example, they use stones, like stones imbued with magic to light spaces. And for some of these rooms, it's the kind of thing where you walk in and the lights turn on automatically. And I'm just like, yes, this is exactly what I would expect from a place that has had magic for a really long time, which is to make things more convenient for the people. So I actually really, really appreciated that. However, what I will say is that because this is such a familiar setting, the author didn't spend a ton of time with explanations on it, which I think we needed to a little bit more explanation when it was something that where the audience would expect it to be more European medieval, but then it ended up being a little bit more modern. Because when we got to those parts, I found it a little bit jarring because it didn't meet my expectations. And like, I appreciated that it was, it had this modern twist. However, like it just, I, I got pulled out of this story a little bit too frequently. Um, and it, this, it does extend to the magic system. It is very familiar. Like it's very much people are born with innate amounts of magic. The types of magic are very, what you would expect with like fire and weather and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it's very clear that this is somewhat genetic. The limitations are that you, you know, have, it's as much magic as you have is as much magic as you can do that kind of thing. It's very, very familiar. Um, and because it was very familiar, again, we didn't get a ton of explanation, but in this instance, I do think that it was just fine. Nothing really particularly unique in the magic system, but I think that that's okay. One thing that I think that we did need a little bit more was information about the various kingdoms. So there's just not a ton of information about the other kingdoms or like how the kingdoms are run or even like even Evie's kingdom of Bologna, we don't really get a ton about. Um, so it's like, it feels like each kingdom is kind of boiled down to like one or two traits and they never break out of that. So for example, it's like Unger is the kingdom that has ogres, people who can morph into ogres, but also they're really into dancing. And that's like all we find out about them really. And I just think it could have used a little bit more. And if we had more, it would have felt like a much more well-rounded story. Um, so it, it wasn't necessarily necessary for the plot, but I do think that this trilogy would have benefited from more. Moving into characters, our main character is Evie. And I found her to be a pretty well likable hero for this, you know, epic fantasy. But I also really appreciated that she had this streak of like practicalness or even ruthlessness that we don't frequently get to see. So when she was faced with choices of like, do I kill this person or do I not? She really runs through like the pros and cons of each one. And she truly thinks about her kingdom and like, 
how she can advance the kingdom, advance what she's trying to do, everything. Um, and like really thinks it through, which I actually really appreciate. Not to say that her feelings don't get in the way. Occasionally they do. She might decide to not kill the person even though she should and show mercy. Or she might decide, um, I probably should kill you and I'm not going to, but I am instead going to make your life hell because like I hate what you did to me. And like, I actually really appreciate all of that. I think it makes her much more interesting. She does make mistakes that are pretty understandable. And in this, I do actually think the author did a really good job of having Evie make these mistakes that are very understandable, but also a little stupid without making it feel like Evie is just too stupid to live, right? I And I do think that in this instance, it was done really well. The one thing that I didn't necessarily like is that Evie felt much younger than how old she actually is, which is 26. So um, in the first book, she felt more like 18. Second books, she aged up a little bit, maybe early 20s, but never quite hit the 26 mark, which I would have preferred to have a slightly older feeling main character. As for all these secondary characters, honestly, we get to know them sort of, but there's no depth to their characters. They're very much in supportive roles, which is total. I mean, it's fine. Um, but like, we don't get a ton about them. I liked some of these characters. I didn't love any of them because like, I didn't know any of them. And so, um, and additionally, like a lot of the interactions between Evie and these characters were, didn't necessarily have any depth either. And this is another area where I think that the author could have done more. Having a little bit more for the secondary characters, having more, like, better interactions with more depth between Evie and these characters would have just really helped this to feel like a very well-rounded trilogy. Now, the one part where I do think that there was more that needed to be done was with the antagonists. All of them just felt like mustache twirling evil. Um, we didn't have solid reasonings for why they were doing what they were doing. And even, and especially with the third book antagonist, honestly, like I felt like I understood why he was evil. I didn't understand why we should fear him. There just needed to be more done. And so Unfortunately, that did have an impact on the story, and so I, it is a criticism of these books. Moving into plot, there is what I found with the plot. Again, it's very familiar. It's very much a slightly predictable overarching plot. Um, we know the general generally what's going to happen in these books. However, what I found is that how we got there was a little bit interesting and it wasn't completely what I would have expected, which means that even though we ended up in the general idea area of where I thought we would end up, it wasn't where I thought we would end up specifically. Like it's kind of over here, right? And I actually really appreciated that. I liked the familiarity of it. I liked that there was this little bit of uniqueness thrown in so that I I ended up a little bit surprised in some instances and I just thought it was really nice. However, for the individual books, I do think it, the plots were variable. So with the first book, I actually did think it was solid. It was interesting. There was enough there to justify the length of the first book. It was great. However, the second book, the plot did feel a lot, of, a, a little bit thin. And part of why that is, is because we were making room for a romantic arc that happened in that book, which I generally did not appreciate because it relied very heavily on a repetition of a very, of a trope that I don't like, which is I have to push you away for your own good. And I'm not, I can't tell you that I'm doing this. Otherwise it ruins it. And it repeated. And so to make room for that romantic arc, we had you know, a little bit thinner of a primary plot, which I just generally didn't appreciate. Like, because I didn't like the romantic arc, it was very obvious to me that our primary storyline was just a little bit thin. And then the third book was really obvious that it was thin because honestly, in the first half, there were drawn out scenes that were designed to raise the tension between Evie and 
our antagonist, but because of the poor characterization of the antagonist, it didn't really work, unfortunately. And so it just left me thinking like, this book could have been shorter, <laughs> which is not great. Um, but even though like I did have some issues with the individual plots, I still overall found them to be pretty enjoyable. Again, nothing truly, truly unique. It was familiar, but interesting and just overall enjoyable. The other thing that I will note here that I also didn't like is that not all of the plot threads get tied up at the end of this trilogy, which is actually okay. However, um, the threads, I truly believe that you kind of, as an author, when you're ending a trilogy, should have some idea of what threads you have to tie up for it to feel like a satisfying, full and complete story. And the threads that were chosen to be tied up versus the ch threads that were chosen to remain open, I don't think was a good mix for it to feel like a satisfying, full and complete story. And I understand why we their open threads are there because there's going to be a sequel trilogy. I just don't necessarily think it should have been left as open as they were. So just a heads up, I did not find this trilogy to be as satisfying as I would have liked. Moving into style, structure, and pacing, and this is actually where I have the biggest critiques. <laughs> so um, mostly this is a very fast paced trilogy. It just flies except for the first half of the third book when we do have some of those drawn out scenes that are trying to raise the tension. Unfortunately, because they are drawn out, they do really slow down the pace. But after the second, once you get into the second half, it really does pick up. Um, as for the structure, the interesting thing about these books is that we do have flashbacks throughout, um, like one extended flashback for each novel that is kind of broken up over the course of the novel. So by the time you finish like the first book, you have the complete first flashback. Um, and what I found with this is that it's an interesting idea that was not well executed. Each, each section of the flashback was just far too long and where they ended, it was always just like supposed to be a cliffhanger to get you interested in the next portion of the flashback. And it just didn't quite work. It felt a little bit gimmicky. So I think that it would have done better if we had cut down on that flashback quite a bit in each story. Um, but the biggest problem is that this, this is a very straightforward writing style, but it is incredibly repetitious in its phrases. So like, for example, um, Evie can smell emotions. And I think by the end, I was just ready to tear my hair out if I had to hear her say hot peppery anger one more time. It is very much not good. Um, but it's also just basically every phrase feels like it's repeated so often. So like knowing that, you know, Balonins play the long game. That's like another phrase that is repeated so, so much. It felt like the audience was getting beat over the head with these things in a very unpleasant kind of way. This is something that I just generally find is a thing with this author's writing. I did um, read a good chunk of the her Elemental Assassin series, which is an urban fantasy series. And this is actually one of the reasons why I gave up on that series is because of how repetitious the phrases are, which is not great. <laughs> so um, overall with this, with this trilogy, I, I mean, as much as I have criticisms of it and how I think it could be done better, I still very much did enjoy the majority of this trilogy. I think it was interesting. It was fun. It wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't literature, but it just, it was nice. It was just nice. And so I, um, I think that if you're interested, I would definitely encourage you to pick it up. Just go in with, you know, if you you need to go in with like slightly lower expectations and I think as long as you do that it will also it can also be a very enjoyable read so for the first book I gave it four stars I do think that this is the strongest book of the trilogy the second book I gave 3.75 stars and the last book I gave three and a half stars overall for this trilogy I ended up giving it three and a half stars 
But that is it. So if you have any thoughts or feelings, please leave me a comment down below. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, have happy reading and I will see you in my next video. Bye!